does Australia rank on an index that measures investor sentiment? Kearney's 2024 Foreign Direct Investment Confidence Index shows that uh, there was a bit of a jump in optimism this year. Adam Dixon from Kearney joins me now. Adam, hi, welcome. Thank you so much. So just, you know, get us across who you're speaking with when it comes to, to, to completing the survey for taking this pulse check. Yeah, great. Thanks, Nadine. Uh, so the sur survey has been running for 26 years. Uh, there have been over 500 participants uh, this year. Uh, these are investors of companies over $500 million in turnover, and they are uh, CEOs and CXOs uh, from around the world. Okay. And so what are they telling you? Well, so overall, uh, optimism is high. So 88% of investors plan to increase investment over the next three years, and that's up 6% relative to last year. Uh, so that's first. Second, uh, Australia, uh, as we can see, is uh, number 10 uh, on the ranking and was number 10 uh, last year. So still uh, in the top 10. It's, it's kind of bounced around between 7 and 11 for the last uh, decade. Um, and I think when investors are looking at Australia vis-a-vis -vis other markets, uh, especially given the uh, the turbulence in geopolitics, Australia is seen as a as a relative uh, safe haven amongst other uh, potential investments. But I think the really key message that comes out of this report is that Australia, that we cannot rest on our laurels. Okay, and we have heard from the government, and we're expecting to hear from the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese today that the government is not going to rest on its laurels, that it will be making it easier for foreign direct investment from some entities, uh, you know, from investing, particularly from pension funds and superannuation funds. So what is the sentiment that you're getting through in your data on that front? Yeah, so that, that I think would be a, a positive uh, attribute. I think there's, you know, quite a few positive things about Australia from an investor perspective. Uh, stable political economy, um, a high quality uh, skills base, uh, relatively easy to do business with, uh, plus some of the legislation like you just uh, referenced. But I think there's also uh, some potential uh, risks that Australia needs to be uh, mindful of as it thinks about its relative competitiveness. So first of all, if you look at the top 10 um, uh, economies in that, uh, in that list, most of them have a lower tax rate uh, than Australia. Um, uh, second, uh, regulation. So regulation in the study around the world came up as an issue uh, with investors, but that's certainly true uh, here in Australia. And then the third area, which is uh, unique, uh, specific to Australia, and I don't think we're seeing it in the numbers right now, but is around IR legislation and how that's going to play through in the coming years uh, in regards to the cost of labor and how that might impact uh, potential investment. Okay, and so um, what you're saying is that comparatively there is still more ground that Australia could make up in terms of rising through the rankings? And is that the ultimate desirability, you know, to be top of the list? What do you sacrifice to, to get there? Well, I, I think there are some structural factors about being in the top of the list and that, you know, most of these economies are much larger uh, than Australia. Mm -hmm. So this is aging where people are most likely to invest and the larger markets attracting the most investment are gonna be uh, higher. So there's some kind of structural factors that work against Australia. But I, I think it's really important that uh, in the land of milk and honey, uh, that we don't get complacent. Uh, and uh, you know, there's a UAE has jumped up into the top 10. Um, you've got uh, Singapore uh, nipping at uh, Australia's heels, uh, New Zealand's in the top 20. So I think um, you know, we've gotta be mindful uh, as an economy, uh, as a country to uh, continue to reform uh, over the near, medium, and longer term. Okay, and so um, the way that we're watching the global macroeconomic picture evolve as well, you know, we've got, uh, obviously, as you would well know, great debate about rates going on. We are seeing slowing when it comes to uh, the consumer. Um, when you think about what could be coming through in this data next year, um, what will be the major drivers, do you think, when it comes to those, you know, within that sort of top echelon of the list? Yeah, so I think we're we're starting to see that play out now. So I think the the moderation or the decrease in inflation overall over the last twelve months, uh, plus the increasing expectation of rates eventually coming down, 
has helped to lead to the, the, the uptick in overall optimism uh, looking forward. I think if we if we see that come to fruition, and if we don't see uh, geopolitics or any other major kind of events, pandemics, whatever, uh, that we could see quite a uh, an even increased uh, optimism uh, going into into next year. 